Hello and welcome to another Saturday service coming to you from the Covenant Nation. It is my pleasure to welcome you this Saturday, the 30th of May, 2020. And just like that, the month of May is going to an end. And I hope that for you, May has been marvelous. May has been God-filled and spirit-led. And in the name of Jesus, we say, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If this is your first time tuning into our Saturday services, I welcome you once again. The difference with these services and the Sunday services is that they are broadcast from inside our living rooms and not from the church auditorium so straight away we'll be going to have a wonderful time of praise and worship with minister olumidenyu and right after that pastor kojimade will be bringing the word for today i hope that you are ready i hope that you're engaged you have your bibles soft copy or hard copy you have your notepads and you're ready to just have a great encounter in the presence of god and to soak in all that god has for you this morning i welcome you once again to to today's service. Father, we bless you today. You have put a song of victory in our hearts. We bless you, Father. You have done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Holy 
praise will continually be on my lips. Bless your name, O God.
Welcome to uh, Saturday um, teaching and uh, today we're going to be looking at something that is very important and significant uh, from God's Word. In fact, I was inspired by this to teach this today uh, from a testimony that I heard recently uh, from someone whose name I will mention and it brought back, you know, this Bible tells us that the Spirit will bring to your remembrance all that I have told you. And so the Holy Ghost reminded me of certain scripture and a teaching I had done at a particular point in time, told me to revisit that teaching, uh, re-examine it, and bring out some salient principles and points out of it, which is what I'm going to do um, today. But we're going to start out by taking our confession. The reason why we take our confession is that we stir up the Holy Ghost on the inside of us and He's able to influence our minds when we go into the scriptures by making a confession of that. So we'll start out with that confession and we go here, um, one, two, go. As I seek to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto us and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking unto me this is the way to go walk ye in it i listen under the influence of the spirit of god and i am not distracted by anything or anyone the word of god is food to my spirit i am strengthened by it this morning it is wine to my heart creating joy within me it is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, and giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things that Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, correction, encouragement, and the enablement to live out God's will. Amen. All right, so we'll go into the word um, today. And I'm going to start reading from Genesis. And I want to talk about the importance. This is what I want to speak about. The importance of um, our, our, our human relationships how God works within our relationships as we relate one to another. I think I heard a Jewish rabbi say this, that the intelligence of God in his creation is revealed in how we relate one to another. That's where the substance of God can really be realized within the lives of people. And I want to see in Genesis chapter 18 what God said to Abraham, who is the father of faith, in verse 19. He said this, or let's start. Uh, God was saying this was about Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, and the Lord said, shall I hide, from verse 17, that's Genesis 18, 17, from Abraham the thing which I do, saying that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Now, you know what it is for somebody who is a very successful, let's say the most successful businessman in the world, looks at a young person and says, you know, let me go into some form of relationship with this young chap now, who probably at the age of 21 is just started out doing things. He said, because I can see that surely this young man is going to become one of the most successful men on the earth. Do you know what that will do? All right, to so that young boy. And in, not just that, do you know what that will mean and the way and manner in which people, that just the prediction of the most successful businessman, the prediction he makes over the life of that young boy. The first thing you want to ask the man is, what did you see in him that you knew with all certainty that he was going to become and you entered into a covenant or an agreement with him at that point and then he highlights all right that those qualities that he saw do you know how people are going to take that to the bank 
Now, look at what God is saying. God says that, look, I want to do something. Let me not hide it from Abraham. And the reason is that seeing Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now, why did he say that? He said, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. He now went on, he says, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham all that all which upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Uh, so God said, Look, the reason why it's going to be a great and mighty nation is that I've declared these things. However, the way Abraham is conducting his affairs, that Abraham will teach his children and his entire household will keep the way of the Lord. And what is that way? The way of judgment and justice. And because they do that and live that way, I will be able to bring upon him and his house everything that I have said concerning them. I will be able to bring upon them everything. That is, you'll find out that in their decision-making and how, particularly in the context of their relationship, how they relate with people in justice and with judgment, I will be able to fulfill all that I have said concerning Abraham. So he talked about justice and judgment. In other words, the way and manner in which Abraham and all of his house will relate with people. And we'll say this. That is the way and manner in which they conducted their affairs. He said, God looked and said, the way he's going about his life, the way in which he pays attention to the relationships in his life, and there's judgment and justice that is going on there, all right, and, and, and seeking, and you'll see in the life of somebody like Solomon there. I mean, God told about David. He said, look, there's too much blood in your hands. You, you have done too much. These things that you have seen, they cannot happen in your life. We, you need to bring forth your own seed here. And the first thing he asked Solomon was that God might give me wise and understanding heart so that I will be able to judge this, your people, wisely and walk in judgment and justice. And God said, for this thing that you have asked for, You've asked for the go and read what he was talking about there. He was actually talking about that these people are great and people, and I have got to give me a wise heart and a heart of understanding that I may be able to execute judgment and justice in my relating with them. And, and because of that, God said, You have asked for something that is so strategic on the earth. That's the key to long life. That's all he was saying. That's the key to wealth. He said, look, that's the key to everything. That's the key to none of your enemies being able to win in any battle. He said, there's going to be peace all around you. You are going to be able to build and do things upon this earth. Now, if we look at it in Proverbs chapter 21 here and verse 3, it tells us, all right? It says, or from verse 2, it says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. Now, then he goes on and says, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable unto the Lord than sacrifice. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable unto the Lord than sacrifice, which means I can go and sacrifice something heavy unto God. But he says, the way I treat people all around me. I mean, I could get up and say, well, I'm going to church. I'm, now, I'm pastor, I'm saying this, and I'm going to give a massive offering, all right, in my church. But just before I went to give the offering inside the house, the way and manner in which I treated every single person around, the, the, the cleaner, uh, the person who drove me there, the way I treated all of them, void of justice, void of judgment. Right? That's why the scripture says you can give all your goods there. Sell them and give all your goods to the poor. He says, but you have not love. He's talking about justice and judgment. He said it's nothing. So justice and judgment talks about the intelligence of God in how we relate 
one with another. This is why Paul prayed in Philippians chapter 1. Now we talk about Pauline prayers. Uh, and we talk about the one in Ephesians that it might open up the eyes of our understanding. And, and we talk about the one uh, in Colo the book of Colossians and fill us with the knowledge of his will. But we miss out on one of the prayers of Paul that is so strategic, that is so powerful. And if we read it, we'll see, all right, how powerful. And it is one of the Pauline prayers. And it's found in Philippians, Philippians 1, 8. It says, for God is my record. Who, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. He said, and this I pray. And this I pray. Because you can look at judgment and justice and say, well, those were Old Testament scriptures you quoted. That we are now in the New Testament where we just walk by love. Yeah. But those were actually love scriptures. Because in terms of justice and judgment there, it's a manifestation of God's love. All right? There are scriptures on love. Now, look at what he says here in Philippians. He says, This I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge, in knowledge. In other words, you are expressing this love here. And that's why God's love is not stupid. God's love is not, another way to say, it's not void of discernment. God's love is not just what, you know, uh, uh, um, we, that will enable, which means in your demonstration of love, you are enabling bad behavior in people. That's not love of God. Uh, the love of God is not something that will that you do that seems like a good act, but uh, by the law of unintended consequence, what happens is you destroy a community in the name of doing something in love for one person or two or three people. So God's love, right, is expressed in all knowledge. In other words, it's, it's done in a light. It is the best thing. So I can meet with a person who may ask me for 100,000 and I say, well, this 100,000 that you're asking for, you know, the purpose of it, if I give it to you, I will be doing more damage to your life than good. But what I can do is that I can tell a friend who can employ you in their office where you'll be earning just 20,000. Let's just say this, a month, but you will be able to acquire the kind of skill that you require for this gift that you have on the inside of you to be able to find full expression. Now, I use my own, which is in silver and gold, I don't have to give, but what I have to give is social capital. So it's done in knowledge. So it says this, in all knowledge, and it says, and judgment, that you may approve decision making, that you may approve things that are excellent. So it's talking about the love of God abounding in all knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve of things that are excellent and you may be sincere and without offense. All right? Till the day of Christ. And many people are heavily offended in their relationships. Well, you know, uh, this person was my friend. I'm heavily offended. And the offense there is stemming out of the fact that they weren't even operating in love with that person. I know what I'm talking about. In other words, it wasn't agape love. It was filial. Failure means an emotional kind of love, all right, attachment, which may have created expectations that were unfounded. We'll see this, where a brother went to meet Jesus and said, we're going to get to that scripture, tell my brother that he divides his inheritance with me. So there might be expectations that are created that will cause there to be offense in your relating with those people. So you may be walking. I mean, look at um, Jacob. He walked in Laban's house. Laban changed his wages ten times. 
Jacob was not offended. Right? Because of certain things. And that's what we're saying about Abraham. He said he would teach his children and his children. Children, which means he taught Isaac. Isaac in his relate Isaac should have been offended. I, do, do, I mean, I mean, we talk about judgment, justice, say, well, we are love, but you, do, do you know what happened to Isaac? They actually took his father's wealth away from him. And he moved somewhere else and dug again. I mean, he actually dug. They waited for him to finish digging his father's well. And then they stripped him of that again and started striving. And, and he wasn't offended at them. Until he found a place. Because he had been taught these principles. Uh, and God said, what I have said can come upon Abraham because he is keeping the principles of judgment and justice. So he says, being sincere and without offense, till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus. So how do we get filled with the fruits of righteousness by Christ Jesus? Because our love abounds yet more and more in all knowledge and in all judgment. So we have this judgment as the first that I want to establish and justice as the practice of the love of God, all right, in a discerning way. That's the point I want to bring. Not just in an emotional way, but in a discerning. And people ask many times, you know, uh, um, uh, how do I give to people? How do I help? Uh, your love abounds more and more because there are many lazy people on the earth today and the laziness was was a result of enablers within their lives that gave them a sense of entitlement that made them think that the world owed them something that they were raised in such a way that they become as through the expression of what people would term as love and care that it became all right even incapacitated and almost are out there not fit to be able to produce in society because of the fact that, that what people thought was love was they spoiled them. So it has to be done in all knowledge and in all judgment so that you approve things that are excellent. In other words, you look at things and that's judgment there. You approve what is excellent. And you do it with all sincerity, justice. There is equity in your dealings. There is justice. You are sincere there. Which means that in relating with people, you are sincere with them. So you are selling them a product and it's in sincerity. It's, it's not that you are deceiving them. There is judgment, there is justice. You say, well, this is this particular price here because of the value. I mean, when it talks about it in Proverbs, he adds the word equity to it. Judgment, justice, equity in dealing with your fellow man there. All right, so we can move on now. So we understand that judgment and justice, all right, is a manifestation of love in its intelligent form. So it's the love of God that manifests itself with God's intelligence. Now, so I want to look at, go on again and look at, remember God says that I can bring all these things upon Abraham. I can bring all these things upon Abraham because I have seen. And what did he see in Abraham? Everything I've said is going to come to pass in his life because he's keeping that way of judgment and justice. So in John 14... All right, and verse, I want to say something, 12 here. Now, Jesus begins to speak. And he says, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, or on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. John 14, 12. And greater works than this shall I do, because I go to the Father. So, so what Jesus really was saying here was, Look, I'm here on the earth. I'm doing certain works. This is what he was saying. 
after resurrection and ascension, I go to the right hand of the Father in a much more powerful position. So I will be able to do much more because then I have been glorified because I will be the one in you doing those works. So when he said greater works, what he was saying was because I have now been exalted, I will be now doing in you works from that exalted all right, or position that I've ascended to. So it goes on. And whatsoever you shall ask. So he says, this is how you are going to get these greater works done. You will ask. In other words, you will go into prayer and ask. Whatever you shall ask in my name. All right. Now we can go along. That's the character which means, well, character and authority that are under teaching, that will I do. Now, I want to just say the character he's talking about. Character of Jesus is love. So we can say, whatever you ask in love, very good, that will I do. That's an excellent definition. You just came up to me now of that name. You ask in the authority based on what I have done, and you ask in my character, which is love. And that's why he said, or James the Apostle said, when you ask and you don't receive, it's because it wasn't asked in love. There was wars and fightings. There's that competitive spirit. He says, where is there strife and envy among you? Competitive spirit. I just want to advise, wherever there's competition, leave it and go into the creative. So he says, quickly now, and whatever I shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we're going to ask for these greater works. And if you shall ask anything in my name, consistent with my character and authority, I will do it. So that's what he said. So now he says, greater works than this shall you do because I'm going to this exalted position. When you ask in my name, I will execute it through you. Now look at what he now goes on. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, this is what Jesus is saying. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Now, if you love me, you trust me, you believe in me, keep whatever commandments I give you in relation to the prayer that you just offered for my works to be made manifest. In other words, he says, when you pray, I will do it. And the way I'm going to do it is going to be through you so i'll give you certain commandments to keep if you keep those commandments you're going to see the manifestation of this we're going to see this here now what did mary tell us the first miracle of jesus and there's a law of first mention in scripture which means when something is mentioned first is setting the pattern all right on how every other thing will happen so what's the law of first mention the first miracle that jesus was going to do when there was no wine and Mary went straight to Jesus to ask him. And this is how we saw the first work of Jesus. So let's take that. In answer to prayer, you go to Jesus and you ask him. Now, Jesus re replied Mary. But then Mary understood the key. She said, once you ask him to do something, he is going to answer you and give you commandments. Now, once you keep the commandments, you are going to see the manifestation. So Mary quickly turned to the disciples, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And then they obeyed that and saw it. So, when you pray for the greater works, all right, and you have asked in love, whatsoever he tells you, this is what he's saying here, do it. Now, he now goes on and says this, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. So, what he was saying was the Holy Spirit is going to come on the inside of you and he is the one going to tell you those commandments. That's one of his, the roles he's going to play in your life. He will tell you the commandments after you have offered a prayer in my name. He says, he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him for he shall dwell with you and he shall be in you. And that's a huge thing, but let's go on. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He says, yet a little while, all right, the world seeth me no more, 
but you shall see me because I live, you shall live also. And in that day you shall know that I, I, I am in the Father, ye in me, and I in you. Now, hear what he said. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. So the law of manifestation is love. Look at what he says. He that hath my commandments and keepeth. In other words, the law of manifestation is keeping the commandments that Jesus gives to you. Now, what he had said earlier on, which I just jumped over, was that he said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he will dwell with you and shall be in you. In other words, I'm going to give you, so when you pray, God answers your prayer, but, but he says, receive the answer to your prayer. Now, the world cannot pray this way because the world can receive what it can see. So I'm going to answer the prayer. I'm, I'm going to give you a supply of the spirit. You can't see it, physically but it will dwell in you and will be dwell with you and shall be in you in its invisible form so it will dwell in you and be with you however in order for me to manifest myself for what i have given you to be made manifest i'm going to say it Keep the commandments that I give unto you. Now, so I, I really want to know, say this, there are many prayers that have been answered that we've not gotten to the manifestation because we are not keeping the commandments of Jesus when he instructs us in our hearts concerning those things. All right? Now, we, we are confessing, but we are not keeping the commandments. Now, quickly, if we go to John chapter 15. Now, we'll see this in answered prayer. Now, follow this. It says in John 15, verse 7, uh, I've got to, I'm because of time, so let me start from here. It says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now, the words there, we've defined it as the remas, which is what it is, of God. All right. But then we have just locked it into one mindset, which is the specific scriptures that God gives to you all right, so that you can exercise faith. But let, let's look at it here in, in the very context in which it was used. And we might glean something else, another dimension to this. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's remas that came out of God, specific, could be instructions, specific things at that particular point in time. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So he's talking about answers to prayers. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. And look at what he says. As my Father, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, now, those could be if you keep my remas. If my words abide in you. Kobe is commandments now. So, let's look at it that way. You shall abide in my love. Even as I kept my father's commandments and abode in his law. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another even as I have loved you. So the commandment will abide in him and his words, that's his commandments now, begin to abide on the inside of us. He says what we are praying about. Uh, now, now, when he says, you shall ask what you will, why, why, why can it, why can he, why, why can you say that in a safe way? 
to a human being. I will do what you will. Now, the reason is that you are keeping those commandments and the commandment is love. Which means that if you're walking in love, then you, your will has now been centered in God's will. You're in perfect alignment with God. So, he's talking about commandments here of love. All right? Greater love hath no man than this. It says that he lays down his life for his friends. It's almost like the purpose of his life now is, is to, be, to be of great benefit unto people. And that's what he's praying. And the greater works that Jesus, or the, great, the works that Jesus did, he didn't do for himself. He, everything was to help people, was to be of great benefit to people, was to raise from the dead, was to heal the sick. It wasn't on himself. It was on others. And he says, this greater works, which means you're going to manifest this love more to people, is what he's talking about. And so he says, this greater love hath no man than this. He has laid down the essence and purpose of his life is to help every single person. And then he went on and said, you are my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. That, and these are commandments. He had said this, the commandment, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love as I've kept my former and abode in his love. So the commandments, they are a commandments of love. So we find here that God speaks about, all right, you praying, and God says, because this person is keeping commandments of love, and these are commandments that are not just not just being emotional about it. This, this is a lifestyle, so it is sustainable. And so he's abounding in the love of God in all wisdom, in all knowledge, and in all judgment. This is the insightful practice of God's love with insight and foresight, done in knowledge. So he says this here about it. And so those remas, those, those words that are abiding on the inside of us, that's flowing, are things he's telling us every day about how to express love. Uh, things is telling us as you walk out and he nudges your heart and gives you a commandment. And, and he reminds you of something and says, look, do this here. Call this person. And he reminds you, get up every day and says, you know this person here is in this situation. Visit, which is commandments there of love. He says, if you abide in me and those commandments, they abide on the inside of you. You are going to ask what you will because your entire life is zeroed in on that. Uh, that's why he tells us faith, all right? We see this in Galatians. I'm getting to where I'm going to land. In the book of Galatians, it tells us that faith works by love. It says, we can see this, that an exercise of faith, Galatians 5, 6, for in Jesus Christ, circumcision availeth nothing. That is not productive. That's what it means availed. doesn't produce anything. Or on circumcision, what produces is faith that works by love. All right? And what is this faith? He says, if I say, if I have faith such that I can remove mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. So faith is what speaks to mountains. Faith is to release the ability of God to cause things to happen. He says, but all of that becomes nothing if you have not love. Because this faith works by love. You are going to only get a manifestation of your faith if you are operating in love. You are only going to get, this is what he's saying, a manifestation of answered prayers if you are operating in love. If you are keeping the commandments of love. You read the story of Abraham, great patriarchs. It's as they were operating in love that they entered into things they were praying about. As they said, let us help this person. They entered into it. As they said, let us build a room for this person. So they were, that's how they started getting into manifestations. All right? Now, it goes on in verse 13 and says, For brethren, you have been called, all right, unto liberty. 
only not use your liberty for an occasion of the flesh, but by love to serve one another. In other words, faith which worketh by serving and being of service to people. You see, that's the way it works. So it says, greater works than this shall you do. Once it's about. So if, if you, you're not going to say great, and, and this was causing the problem. Yeah, also you say, well, you know, uh, you know, I just want to believe God. I need to have my own car. I need to have this. And it's all about us. And we have not become a channel for divine activity upon this earth. And that's why he said, we'll see this in Luke chapter 12. He said, do not pray like the heathen do. He says, what do you do? Get into love. Take from what you have, sell. All right? That's what I was talking about. Get yourself into that space. Get it. Get over your own self into service. Every powerful thing. I mean, we have this phone here. The reason this, this phone was designed wasn't for the designer. It was that we will be able to use a particular phone for communication. And no matter how much this phone is, I have derived more value from using this phone than any amount I was have spent from acquiring that particular phone. That's, that's equity. All right? So it's faith that works through service. And, and so uh, he says, I know Abraham. He's going to teach judgment and justice. His children will be the first to open up the door for people to come in. His children are going to be very polite to people. They will see how he has done his thing. All right, we've got to bring this to a close here. Okay? So it says there about this love work. Now, I just want to close by telling this story here about faith and manifestation. And, and I have come just by looking at this life of Patriarch and this story I heard, it triggered something on the inside of me. And I've come to the realization from scriptures also that when we don't get uh, manifestations as we should, sometimes we have broken the circuit of God on the earth for these things. What do I mean by this? Now, it's a story I heard, and this was uh, Muiwa Olariwaji, which was that Muiwa River song here. Uh, we all know him who holds Turning Point. And he was telling a story recently. I was watching this some days back on, on Facebook. And it was, I think, like a coaching session. And he kept emphasizing. And he kept emphasizing the way and manner in which we treat people inside our network. And he made a very powerful statement. And he said, because it is not your work that will speak for you, but it's people that will speak for you. Whatever you do is people that will speak. So if you do a work, people are still going to have to speak for you to get doors open. And he talked about the way you treat people, therefore, is very important because people are going to be the open doors to things. And you know, he tells us in, in the Bible, Jesus said, he said, ask, you shall receive. He said, he went on and said, seek, you shall find. He says, knock, the door shall be open. He said, which of you, all right, shall ask? Being right, natural, will ask your son for fish and you give him a scorpion, will ask for this and give it. He said, if you being evil, know how to do good things unto uh, to your children. How much more? He said, whatsoever therefore you will that men should do unto you, the same do unto them. This is the law and the prophets. And so he was talking about answered prayer that flows through people. And many of the prayers that we offer up on this earth, if the manifestation is going to come. And for Christ to manifest himself through somebody in your space. And the Father shall manifest himself through somebody in your space. So he told this story. And I close it. That's very powerful. And I believe this is how it works. He said he was talking about how he got his position at turning point. Now he said it's public, so I can say this. At turning point. And he had told how he even got onto Premier Radio in England, how it was, it was through an old school mate who had become the head of programs there and who he used to cook. They, they were friends. He would come to his apartment. He would cook for them, ask how they were, and just kept in touch. One of them had become head of programs and saw him and insisted, all right, that connection. Well, when he got to this job, Turning Point said he was now on Premier Radio. He was, you know, doing that, playing music and all right, and doing all of that. And somebody in London 
had heard him on radio and told her brother in America, this is great guy on radio, you know, because the brother too was in, brother of this person was on media and he didn't know this, he didn't know all this was going on, all right? But it's later on he realized she had listened and then told somebody, her brother in America, listen to this guy because the brother was into media, very good. And the brother had said, listen, he didn't know about this. And then one day, as his nature was, he just realized that there was somebody who used to be in the church in which he used to attend who had moved to America. And he was just thinking about the chap and just said, and this is the commandment, the nudgings of the Holy Spirit. He just said to pick up the phone and call this chap. Just to find out how he was, he asked around, got his number, and held a conversation. Not knowing that, this chap was staying in the house, staying in the house of this particular gentleman whom sister had been telling about him, who had been listening to him, all right, all right, on and off on radio. So when this chap was speaking, speaking at the end, now said, oh, Mwewa, this Mr. And uh, so the other guy listened and said, which Mwewa are you talking to in London? He said, well, he's on the, is it the one that's on Premier Radio? Oh, I've been looking for this guy for years. I've been listening to him. My sister told me about him. Get him on the line. Now, it was because he was concerned about that particular gentleman and called, which means there was a nudging in his heart. Now you can easily obey that, disobey that, and, and stay focused on what you are doing. Same thing with Joseph. Joseph Colizia does not pay attention to, to the chief butler and none of that, and so I'm a gifted person and just the work he was doing. It, 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 was, it was the chief butler he paid attention to and said, why is your countenance falling? Why are you sorrowful? And was concerned about the state of the people. That was what opened up the door. And this is how God locks things all around us. So, he said, when he did that, the chap now said, oh, he said, get him. So he got him first. Oh, I've been listening to you. My sister told me about you and all of this. Come over to America. We want to put you. Now, that gentleman happened to be Mr. Victor Oladoku. And he says, oh, I want to put you here or, you know, on, on, on a program turning point. And he said he went and put, he, they put it on his program turning point there. And, and he was there. He performed and all of that. And as he was leaving... All right, Mr. Victor Laduko looked at him and said, have you ever thought about hosting this program one day? He said he just looked and smiled and everything, and he left. Seven years later, seven years later, what happens? He gets a call that, will you be interested in hosting Turning Point? So he moved, goes to America for the interview. Well, cut long story short, they said he was the only one they were interviewing for that position, so he had to get it right and all of that. So, I mean, it was so powerful the experience that he called Mr. Victor Lado and tell me, thank you so much for, you know, you told me seven years ago that, you know, I should take this. You put a strong word in for me because I'm the only one that has been, thank you. And Mr. Lado said, what are you talking about? I have no knowledge of the fact that they were, they were even going to, I, I knew they were going to pick up somebody, but I, I'm not involved in the process at all. He said, you mean you are not the one who called my name? He said, no. He said, then how in this world did they call me out of the blues? So he goes back and after checking, he finds out that one of the producers who was on set when Mr. Oladeko invited him to England that first time, that came as a result of Mr. Logan's sister telling him, you know, human beings are involved. And that connection was made because he called this particular gentleman just to find out how it was. That lady was on set and saw him and left and that he just took the numbers of people around there and from time to time he used to keep touch with them how are you doing or they say he said it was that particular lady one of the producers that went to meet the boss and said you know i've been praying about this thing praying about this thing and i think this chap Mwewa, mr Mwewa here in in england might be suitable for this particular position and she made short a strong impression that they sent for him and that's how he began to turn in point 70 million people. Now, here's the truth. If he didn't call that gentleman, all right, he could be talented. His talent, which is very important, you do things with excellence, yes. Mr. Oladokun will have heard about him. Yes, would have been listening to him. But the connection had to take somebody he showed goodwill to. Two things. Your gift is in operation, all right, but the way you treat people also both of them. So the way he treated that person was also in operation. I mean, I, I met somebody who opened up a door for me to preach somewhere in the world. Uh, now, not, not the invitation, but they keep calling me every year. 
In fact, when I told my mother, I said, they called you to this place. He said, I hope you've gone. I said, I've not gone out there. And I asked him one day, so how in this world do you know about me? He said, Dr. Bill Winston. Oh, I never knew Dr. Bill Winston talks about me. He said, he was the one that kept telling us about you. People will have to, you can't be gifted, but somebody will have to say. All right? And the people that are going to say are people that made contact with you in your, so if you treat all those guys wrongly, then you just find out that the gift goes out, but the backing is not there. And so, what happened, and I think this was short-circuiting manifestation. In other words, the treatment that people are doing, now they're gifted, they're, they're this, but the treatment there, which means the person who should be that final piece in the puzzle to make that connection is not doing it. And the reason why they're not doing it is because they have a bad taste. So they should open that door. They should do that. But they just have that bad taste. So the connectors there are not making it for that individual. And that's why it's imperative that you treat people. I mean, I listened to a chap who is very successful in this country, well, fairly successful in this country, he's a multi-millionaire. And he said, they asked him, what was your case? He said, treat everybody right. He said, it was somebody you would have considered an area boy within the environment that opened him up to the property business. He comes from a very, very large family in Lagos where they are said, they wanted to sell a massive amount of land. It was that guy just treating him with that. I said, ah, 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 ah. I went to tell the head of his family and everybody. I said, okay, bring the gentleman. He said, that's how they introduced me to a family. I didn't know that he comes from that kind of background. So, the key is, put your faith out there. But for that law of manifestation of what you are declaring, treat people right and walk in love. I believe we've got to stop at this point. I believe we are blessed. I just want to pray for every single person who has watched this broadcast here. I declare into your life in the name of Jesus Christ that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that shift will be made on the inside of you. And you'll be brought into the fullness of walking in love with all knowledge and judgment. And that this earthly experience you have will be one where you have repeated encounters with Jesus manifesting himself to you. The Father coming to serve you in and through people as you walk in love and fulfill the commandments of Jesus in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, join us. We do have very powerful experiences, song and the sword. What we're doing is high praises and meditation, transferring spiritual realities into our soul in the process of meditating upon God's word. Every morning, thousands of people are on this, 6.30 a.m. and in the evening at 9 p.m. every single day on mixlr.com forward slash covenant. Thank you for watching and allowing us into your private homes and spaces. God bless you and have a wonderful week in his presence. You are welcome back and it has indeed been a fantastic service today. It is always our prayer that every time that we hear messages, God speaks specific instructions to you that you know to do from the message you have heard. And that is my prayer for you today. And that every seed that is sown will be a 30, 60, and a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you'd like to get a copy of today's service and other services from the Covenant Nation and by Pastor Bojuo Yemade, please visit our website, www.insightsforliving.org go to the e-library section and all of the messages there are for you to partake of. If this is your first time or you just like to know more about our church, the Covenant Nation, spend time on the website. There's information there for you to get to know us and to get to know how you can become a part of us. Remember that services still continue on Sunday morning. So 6.45 a.m. tomorrow morning, Sunday on mixlr.com forward slash covenant We'll be joining Pastor Koju live. It flows into Instagram and Facebook at 7 a.m. Also on YouTube and Facebook, there's service at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Sunday morning. For those who would like to watch a television broadcast, we are on channels television every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And the children are not left out. Children's services hold on Sunday mornings as well, every 10 a.m. and 12 noon 
on YouTube. And the teenagers have an Instagram live service as well at TCN Jesus Tribe. Instagram live every 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Sunday morning for teenagers. So there's something for everyone. And I hope that you avail yourself of this. Tell your friends, tell your family to join us for an amazing time in God's presence. Remember, songs and the sword still hold to Pastor Koju every morning and evening, 6.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. Amazing time of confession and declaring the word of God and just engaging with music as a sword in the name of Jesus. So join Pastor every 6.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. for that. I want to thank you for being a part of today's service. Indeed, may the month of May end gloriously for you and may the month of June be your month of turnaround and divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Do join us next week, Saturday. God bless you.